Hello everybody, it's Wendy and today we are going to make a pendant or necklace using this beautiful pendant um, that was given to me by Mossy Oak Cup Designs. So I will link her information in the description box below. Um, she makes beautiful things and she has a YouTube channel where she shows you how to make all kinds of just amazing beautiful creations. So um, please, please check her YouTube channel out and subscribe to her. Her name is Pam. She's a very sweet and she sent, she sent me this um, pendant and some bracelet bars. I actually did an unboxing um, on my channel here a few days ago. So these are the things that she sent. All of these. Now this is supposed to be a bracelet bar too, but I really think it looks good like this. I'm going to make it into a pendant. And you could do that with any of these, I suppose, just as long as you hang something from them. Now this one's curved, so it kind of needs to be a bracelet bar, and it's beautiful. I am going to make a bracelet out of it. But um, as for the rest of these things, I'm going to put them aside and just use this one today. And we're gonna make a pendant out of this so let me show you everything that you're going to need if you want to make the exact same thing that I'm making so you will need a pendant of some sort I know you're not gonna have this exact same one but you can use anything you know um, I'm going to make it kind of dangle down and then put a bunch of um, clusters here of other things so you'll need a pendant of some sort you will need I'm going to use a bunch of these flowers. So these are um, hand-painted lucite flowers from my website. Um, these are smaller ones. I've got green, yellow, and burgundy. So this is gonna be a very fall color necklace, okay? Um, I have these small tulips that are also on my website in um, yellow or gold or orangey. And I have these tiny little flowers that are also on my website in a green. So, and then we're going to use the, a few of the big ones. I'm not sure how many, but I've got, these are 22 millimeter and they are hand painted and lacquered. And we're going to use some of these with this as well, but I'm not sure which ones. <laughs> so I just pulled out some colors that I thought looked good together and we'll just have to figure it out as we go. Okay, and then I have a couple of little um, check flower drops. That's these right here, little tiny guys. These are not on my website. Um, I have some sparkly rondelles, and I do have rondelles, small ones and big ones on the website. Um, I have some fold over cord ends because we're going to be using this um, rat tail for. Uh, the sides of the necklace. So I've got the rat tail and I don't know what millimeter this is. It does not tell me anywhere on this spool, <laughs> but it's just um, It's a chocolate brown rat tail just a satin rat tail um, Okay, we've got the fold of over cord ends. We've got a lobster and an extender chain I have a chain that I'm going to hang the pendant from and the dangles. It's got fairly big links. You'll need fairly big links on this. I have um, a metal bead I'm going to use right here because I want this pendant to hang down further than all the other beads. And then I think I'm going to put um, one of these flowers on the bottom like this. Okay. So I've got this metal bead just to make it hang lower. So it shows really well. And then I have a, a variety of different bead caps. <laughs> so I've got these big ones to cover the big flowers if I decide to go with them. I've got these pointy leafy ones, um, which are on my website. These are. Um, and none of these other ones are on the website except for these right here. And I have these in three different colors up there. And then I have these tiny ones over here. But I do have some bead caps up there. Um, several like three or four different kinds so you can check those out if you're interested um, I've got some head pins I've got some jump rings and you'll need your jewelry tools so let me adjust this camera down a little bit so that I am viewing the workspace that I'm going to be working in because I'm really bad to be off screen and let's move some of these things out of the way so the first thing that we need to do is we need to create some dangles now I want this to hang in the middle of the chain, so let me get the middle of my chain. And it looks like I have got double links in the middle. So I'm actually going to take one link off so that I don't have double links in the middle because I definitely 
want it to hang um, just, you know, I want it to be down in the middle. I don't want there to be a double length thing going on. So, and this is one very thick chain. So we're going to have to use, <laughs> we're going to have to use um, pliers to get it off, the link off, which is probably what I should have done to start with. I just thought it might would cut pretty easy, but no, it does not. All right, so let's go ahead and just open a link, take it off. Okay, now if we look, and you can take it and a head pin or an eye pin, this is a good way to do this, to hold it up. You can definitely see that this is the middle link of this chain, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and make my bead dangle that I'm going to hang this down from and put it right there so I know where the exact middle of my chain is. So you actually do need an eye pin for that, and I didn't say that, I'm sorry. I just said head pins, but... I wasn't thinking. So I'm just going to put this um, bead on the eye pin, okay, and create a loop at the top. Just like this. Um, I'm trying to grab my pliers. I still have not marked my pliers, guys. I need to mark my pliers. <laughs> I'm trying to decide if I want to do a wrap loop. And I think I, well, I don't, I don't think I have enough on this head pin to do a wrap loop. And I don't really have a lot of long head pins. So now we're just going to do a regular loop. So I just cut it. Take my chain nose pliers. And I get it like right where I want it to get the right size for my loop. And then just roll it. Okay, so there's a good loop. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to hang the pendant from this. And I'm going to hang this loop from my chain so I know where the center is. Just like this. And maybe I didn't open it far enough, so not just like this. Open it a little wider. <laughs> it's gonna be a day, I can tell already. <laughs> and let's find the center again. There it is. And go ahead and put this on. That just helps me so when I put my dangles on, I'll know where to put them on each side and I won't be getting things lopsided. Okay, so there's that bead. And I can go ahead if I want to and put the um, pendant on. Okay. And if you need to, you can do that with a jump ring, but I think that's good. Okay, so there we have it so far. There's our pendant and our metal bead. So now what we need to do is create a bunch of links. So I'm going to lay these flowers out kind of how I want them to go. So I really want to kind of stagger the colors a little bit. And I want to make this really full. I want it to be like a statement. Um, necklace, a statement piece. So that looks pretty good to me right there. Um, put fuzz on there. These colors like this. So now I have to decide kind of how I want to build my flowers. Okay, so I think these big bead caps, I'm going to use one on this one. Now these just slide down over these flowers like this. They kind of bend so you can slide them down here and then close them up, bend them back. You can bend them out, slide them down, and then bend them back. And so I think I'm going to put one on that one. And I don't want to make it perfectly symmetrical, so I think we'll do one on this one over here. The green one. And I just open them up, slide them down, and then bend that bead cap back around them. Just like that. Okay. And then, um, so let's look at this one here. I've got all kinds of options. I could use this bead cap on here, which these you can bend in some more if you want to. Um, just like that. Of course, you would do it a little neater than that. <laughs> I didn't do a very good job on that. Um, but these I think I like better on these smaller flowers because they kind of cover like that. And if you bend them in, they look really pretty on there. So I'm going to use those on there. These bigger ones look really good on here. Like this. Okay. 
So I may do that one on there. And then let's see, I could put a yellow one underneath here. Now, if you put them underneath, you kind of want to make it hang down a little. So sometimes I will put a couple of beads up in there, but we'll see. Um, I'm also going to use some of these little flowers to fill in in between here, like this. So let me lay those out, kind of how I want them to go. Do I want a green one in there? Yeah, that looks good. We'll do a yellow one up here. And I don't want to do, well, I could do another green one right there. I guess that wouldn't hurt. Yeah, that actually looks good. Okay, so I am going to do the little flowers like that, and I probably will use some of these bead caps on the smaller flowers, just like that. Now these right here can be used underneath, like this, and it makes like a little skirt on there. It's kind of cute. So I'm just kind of laying everything out right now how I want it to go. Um... Okay, and let's see, we could put this one underneath this guy up here. Um, this guy could use a bead cap maybe. I just want to kind of stagger it. I don't want it to all look exactly the same on both sides. So we'll put this one on here. And I'm not going to put a bead cap on every single one. I'm just going to kind of randomize it a little bit. So there's those. Now I'll also have these tiny ones that I might use here, maybe here. Let's see, we could use a rondelle there. You can use the rondelles underneath as well, and it gives it kind of a sparkle from the bottom. So I think, let's see, this yellow flower. I'd kind of like to put the green one underneath there. I may do this. I may put this green one under here and then hang this green one under it. It's really fun to layer these. It makes them so pretty and just gives it a lot of um, fullness and it's just really pretty to do it this way. The more you layer, the more full and just intricate it looks. So I like to do that. I might use those there. And I just I just you know lay the things out like I think that they would look good. It's your totally your own design. Um, and it's fun. Just enjoy it. It doesn't have to be symmetrical, it doesn't have to be perfect. Everything doesn't have to match perfectly. It can just be all you know different and Makes it pretty. I do want to use a lot of these little rondelles in here. I want them to be, I want there to be a lot of sparkle. Just little spots of sparkle, I mean. <laughs> okay, let's try that one right there. I might do one down here. I might use one of these down here too. Okay, so let's start, let's just start building. So now we've got this little flower up here on the end. So I'm going to put on the flower with, well, actually I got to start from the bottom, don't I? I'm going to put on the rondelle, which I just dropped in the floor. This bead cap, see how that looks? It's just cute. Then the flower, and the bead cap is big enough that it stops right there. It doesn't go up in the flower, so it's really pretty. And then we'll do this bead cap on top. See that? Look how cute that is. Okay. And then I'm just going to make a loop. And I, you try to make the loops kind of tight. Don't make them real loose because you want this to hold tight. You don't want it like wobbling around a whole lot. Okay. Just like this. Okay, roll your loop back just like that. And I'm just going to lay them there as I make them. I'm not going to put them on just yet. So then we'll do this big one here. Let's see what I can do with it. Um, I do have these cute little guys right here. So let's see. Let's do 
Let's do this. Let's do this cute little guy right here. I don't want to do another one of those right beside it. Now see, he's going to go up in there. So I need to put some sort of a bead up inside. Um, the best thing to do, and where is my bead soup? Oh, I see it. It's way up here. I've kind of rearranged my room, so I'm not... Um, I'm still kind of figuring out where things are. So if you have a clear, just a spacer bead, like these are the beads that come in between other beads on a strand, you can use that. So just take that, where do I go with my little flower, and stick it there. See how it makes it hang down a little? You could even use another one if you want it to hang down a little further. It's like this. See that? And it's really cute. So, um... I think I'll do this. We'll go like this. Put the bead caps back to back. Just like that. And I'm going to use the little green rondelle on top. So just like that. It's adorable. And again, make your loop. It's really fun to create these little flower links, I think. So there's that one. I don't even know where he was at. I'm just going to lay him right there for a second. Oh, I was going to put him up in this one, wasn't I? Okay, well, <laughs> we'll do this. I got sidetracked looking for my bead suit. We'll put him over here. Okay, so this one. We were going to do one up inside there. Um, so I'll just do the same thing I was going to do since I moved that one over here anyway. We'll do a little rondelle. This little flower, the other one here. And a couple of the clear beads. Just like that. Put it right up in here. Just like that. I think they're so cute. And then here's our flower. Okay, just like that. Now, if you want this one, this green one, to show a little bit more, grab another clear bead. And just stick it right on here. And when you put this up in here, it's going to hang down just a tad more. See? They are so pretty, I think. Especially when you layer them like that. I love it. So then we're going to make a loop. I've had a lot of people ask me about these tools. These are Zeron tools that I got from Amazon. Um, I also have a really good set of Beadalon tools that Casey from Crystalline Designs gave me. And she said she got them from Hobby Lobby. And I love them. They're awesome. So if you're looking for tools, that's what I'm using. Alright, now this guy, I think... I'm going to use one of these on. So this is the little... These are on my website, these little flowers here. And I'll put a little clear bead in here so he hangs down just a tad. Mm, I might just leave it like that. I'm going to do a simple one this time. Nothing... Yeah, let's make it simple this time. And I may stick, let me stick this little rondelle on top just to give it a little sparkle. Yeah, that's cute. Okay. Roll back your loop. See? And just lay it there to the side. Now, just continue building your, um, your loops and everything all the way around. I'm going to pause the video while I finish mine and then I'll be right back. Okay guys, so here's what we've got now that I have made all of the little dangles um, and the little dangle for down here. And I don't know why the thing keeps turning orange. I have no idea. Ugh, I've had nothing but trouble with cameras lately, so I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, I've got all the little dangles and this little dangle down here. So now all we need to do is hook them all on our chain. Now I'm not going to hook them on the first two links of the chain here because I'm going to use the first two links for the rat tail. 
Okay, so go ahead. I like to use jump rings for this because I feel like it makes them um, hang better. So go ahead and get your jump rings and hook all your little dangles on however you want them to go. And then come on back and we'll finish it up. Okay, so one thing I wanted to mention is you want to make sure when you're hooking these on your chain that they all hang from the bottom of the link. So the part that's right down here, you don't want to hook it on up here or it's going to flop around weird. And if you have trouble doing this, I found that if you take a necklace form, like one of these um, uh, black velvet ones, and pin this to it and then put your links on, it makes this hang like you, it would on your body. And it's a little bit easier sometimes to get all of these little um, dangles hooked on the right way. So that's just a tip. Um, you can take it or leave it, and I'll be right back. Okay, so here is our necklace so far. So I've got everything hooked on here, and I really like the way it looks. So now what you need to do is you need to measure how far down you want this necklace to hang. Because we're going to cut this rat tail. We're going to double it like this. You can double it like this, or you don't have to. If you want to connect it with the... Um, little cord end right here. You can do just a single layer, but I'm going to double mine because I want to loop it through. I think that would look really cute. So I don't want it to be super long and I'm going to put an extender on it. So I have already measured it next to me and I'm going to cut it right about here and then I will tell you how long this is. <laughs> um, so this piece that I've cut is see we've got 12 inches about 17 inches long okay and like I said I'm doubling it over like this so I want to get my ends even on the top and then I'm just going to take it I'm going to make sure my necklace is laying flat like this the links are flat and I am just going to Put the loop through the link like this. I might have to grab my pliers to pull it through a little bit. Okay, just like this. And then I'm going to take the two pieces here and go right up through the loop. Okay, and that is going to attach it right to this link. And I'm just going to straighten it up here. See? Just like that. Okay? And it just makes a nice little uh, loop right there. But I love the way this looks on this chain and this necklace. I think it's really pretty. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Measure my 17 inches this time because I want to make sure I get them the same. <laughs> okay. that out of the way and then I'm just going to do the same thing on this side so let me get my loop up here I'm going to get my ends together put my loop right through this link just like this put these two through here and pull tight okay and there it is now if you wanted you could knot it right here you could put a big barrel bead right here you could do a large hole bead you could do about anything you want but I think that it has plenty going on here I don't want to add much more to it so I'm just gonna finish my ends and to finish my ends I'm gonna grab my little ribbon ends here and I'm just going to smooth this out to where it's laying side by side and I'm going to trim the end if there's anything longer like this one okay I'm just going to trim this end even then I am going to lay them in this cord end I have trouble with these cord ends they are not my friend but I'm going to try to show you how I do it so <laughs> if you lay it in here and then you grab it with your fingernail on the part that's the loop right here so see this you've got a little bit sticking out there just grab that 
And then I take a pair of flat nose pliers, wide ones, whoops, that's not wide flat nose pliers. <laughs> so these kind, see how it's a little wider on the end? And I very gently, because you've got to make sure you keep this rat tail in there, very gently fold it over, press it down good, and then do the other side just like this. Okay, now you can use a little glue in there if you want. I'm not going to. I just press it down really good and give it a tug and it's secure in there. I'm going to trim these little ends up. Okay, just like that. Give it a tug. And then um, if you want to, and I do this often, you can take a lighter. I had to open mine, sorry for the crinkling. And just barely, yeah, there we go. Just barely touch it. You just want to kind of melt the end right there of the rat tail, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So let me get these even. Just wanna make sure you've got them even. Okay, take your little end piece. Now I turn it around like this so I can hold it by the loop. That just seems to work best for me. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> and then I'm just going to very gently fold it over. And like I say, I've had trouble with these fold over ends. I just am not so coordinated, but this, today they seem to be cooperating. Thank God. <laughs> okay. I'm going to flatten it really good, pull it, it's tight, and then I will take my little lighter, be careful with your lighter and don't burn yourself, and just melt those ends a little bit, okay? All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to, I'm going to put an extender chain on this, because sometimes, depending on the outfit I wear, the shirt I wear, I like to wear things longer or shorter. Um, I couldn't find my extender chain. There it is. Okay, so I'm just going to take um, a jump ring. I'm going to use a fairly large jump ring here to hook. This is how I do when I hook my lobsters on. I use these bigger jump rings. I'm just going to go ahead and put it on. There's somebody at the front door and Sadie's barking her head off. Be right back. Okay, so FedEx is delivering my Moonstone beads. Yay, they're going to go up on the website soon. As soon as I can get them uploaded. <laughs> so there's our extender and one end. We are going to put our lobster on the other. And yes, you should use two pairs of pliers when doing this. But I didn't. <laughs> and there it is. Now, if you want to make a little dangle to put on the end of this, you can. I like to. I just think it's cute, but it's not totally necessary. But I'm just going to use a couple of these rondelles and this little flower and just make a little dangle for the end. I just think it's cute. Just adds a little touch, and if I would decide to sell this instead of keeping it, it's just a special little touch. Okay, so let's go ahead and Roll this loop back, and I'm just going to stick it right on the end of the extender. And there you have it. It is a very pretty, I like this necklace a lot. It turned out better than I even thought it was going to. So here it is. I will put it on a form and take a picture so you can see the whole thing, but, you know, there's the gist of it. And again, Mossy Oak Designs, check her out on YouTube. She has a wonderful YouTube channel. Go over there and subscribe to her. Give her some love. And um, yeah, she makes beautiful, beautiful things. So I've got to get off here and get ready for work. I'm pushing it. I'm going to be late. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.